good. After hitchhiking and pedaling to the Arctic Ocean, I was ready to begin my ride south through Alaska. I'd spent the previous night in Prudhoe Bay, and before leaving, I stopped by the only restaurant in town. There, I had my last fresh meal for the coming days and met Doug, a fellow cyclist who had been trying to hitchhike out of Prudhoe for three days. After breakfast, we rode to the local general store. I bought some bear spray, and Doug elected to take an expensive flight out of Prudhoe. We exchanged contact information, and before long, I had started on my long journey south. How's it going? Good, good. <laughs> Pretty good. Just starting out for the day. Just out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're doing great. You're, you're real close. Yeah. Yeah. This road is killing me. This is a crazy road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, Slovenia. Slovenia. Okay. You? Uh, I'm from uh, California. California. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You came a little bit farther, huh? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we started in Anchorage. Me and my friends. Right oh, okay. road. It's dirt. It's going to stay that way for a long time. Wow, that's that's crazy. I took a you guys looked really cool out there with that rain cloud and everything. Yeah. I took a few pictures of y'all. I'm not sure if you want the pictures, but I could I could send them to you later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Yeah, I could get you a number. Can I touch the velvet or is that Yeah, sure. I've never never really gotten as close to a caribou. Caribou tonight. Hunters often leave the caribou. We happen to be uh, going in the same area. Following my initial meeting with the hunters, I rode for another hour and a half to an isolated airstrip named Happy Valley. The place is owned by Kyle, a 23-year-old airplane mechanic who works in Prudhoe Bay. I took some time to explore the area surrounding the airstrip, and soon the hunters, Kyle, and myself were around a fire, eating caribou and exchanging stories of our time in the north. After dinner, Kyle generously offered a container with beds as a residence for the night, and I made friends with his dog, Otis. That morning, I took my time in camp with the guys, said my farewells, and left. One thing that stood out to me about that day, and really the Dalton Highway in general, were the trucks, who were the primary users of the road. Some semi-drivers, they slow down for cyclists, but others rage past you at 90 miles an hour. Rocks and dust fly sky high, and each time that passed, 
I made sure to fully cover my face and close my eyes to protect myself from the missiles that were being thrown at me. On the bright side though, traffic on the road is sparse, and the vast majority of semi-trucks pass through during specific windows in the day. Later on, I also saw a group of muskox, who are a shaggy and playful animal weighing in at around a thousand pounds. Aside from the trucks and the muskox, what I remember most about the day is the tremendous landscape that was before me. The Arctic is unlike anywhere else that I've been. Its horizon is crisp, the ground red, green, purple, and yellow. The animals are prehistoric and powerful, and its mountains tall and rugged. I rode into the evening, found an abandoned shack for lodging, and rewarded myself with a ration of dark chocolate before bed. Tomorrow would be the toughest day of the trip. First few miles of the day, here in the Brooks Range, and uh, yeah, fairly strong headwind out at the moment. The goal for today is to get over uh, Attigan Pass, the highest uh, road pass in Alaska, and then uh, drop down on the other side. And from there, it's about 70 miles to Coldfoot, and it's all pretty much flat or downhill. So, yeah, once I get over the pass, it'll be pretty quick going. Until then, so just kind of undulating hills through this valley. I don't mind. Look at these colors. Crazy. abandoned firehouse in to change my clothes and take to more rain appropriate gear. few miles of this road have uh, been a bit muddy. I can still see though and uh, you know if there's any point in time when I can't see it I'll just use echolocation. Man it gets really soupy out there and you know semis will kick up some 
mud at you too, so. It's fun. It's fun stuff, but you get pretty dirty, so. Have a good time. Woo! It's been a long day. There's this place called Diedrich. Diedrich? Something like that. And, uh,. Uh, showing up on the map, I don't know what's there, but hopefully there's a building or something that I could uh, find. Just washed off my face. There's nothing here. I think it's an abandoned airstrip. Just camp out under the clouds. That's the plan. For this trip, I elected to sleep in a bivy sack. It's an excellent survival tool, but far, far less comfortable than a tent. This night's weather alternated between a drizzle and downpour. The Dalton Highway was showing its teeth.